All right, ladies and gentlemen, come in. I know you guys are waiting for the results of the American um, elections going on, but we have to <laughs> we have to be tackling every corner. That's what smart individuals will do. Eh? <laughs> so I know some of you may feel anxious, anxiety is holding some of you. <laughs> but don't worry, calm down. Everything is going to be okay. Okay, at the end of the day, good people are emerging, and we're going to do what we have to do. So, guys, um, as you can see, I posted this flyer, but we made a mistake because time changed in America. Um, so, we're one hour, should I say one hour ahead or behind? One of it, anyway. So, right now is about almost 5 p.m. in Nigeria, but we had stated that it would be 4 p.m., which should have been 11 a.m. here, but we went one, back, uh, one hour behind. So we try to, um, you know, just keep it in the middle by coming in 30 minutes earlier and later, if that makes sense, okay? So in that way, we're not too late. So I have a very interesting guest with us here. Uh, for those of you who have been following the um, protests in Nigeria, you know, we're not making trouble. We're not trying to fight anybody. We're only just requesting that things will get better in our country. And I have been super, super honored to have great men who have been, you know, in one way or the other, trying their possible best to, you know, uh, see how we can move that country, Nigeria. And today is no different. I'm going to have someone come on very, very soon. As you can see, it's already on the screen here. Moving Nigeria forward with Right Honorable Henry Odochuku Wamuba. House of Red Emo States is with me today so please share this video um it's gonna be a good 30 minutes because like i said this is not all we're gonna be doing it's gonna be a lot um a lot more of um these um you know lives because we want to just kind of like see how we can move forward i know some of you some of some of you had questions but you know we're gonna keep it straight to the point i want him to educate us and i uh, ask you know ask questions regarding what is currently happening and what needs to be done and how we move forward so ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, please help me welcome Right Honorable Henry Dojukumwa um, House of Red, as he's coming on right now. Boom. Thank you very much, sir, for you. today. How are you doing, sir? Very well. Thank you, MC Charles. How are you doing Not in the US? No bad at all. We are just uh, in anticipation waiting for who will be the next president <laughs> I know. of the United States, you know? But uh, we also have work to do. We have work to do. I want to thank you very Good. much sir, for joining us today. Sure. Um, I, I spoke with your team and I must say that, um, you know, despite anything going on in Nigeria, we're still able to, you know, I appreciate people like you reaching out, you know, and saying, hey, listen, what can we do and how can we move this country forward? So one more time, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to keep this, you know, as, as brief as possible, straight to the point. Um, first off, you know, we'll just go off with questions and then I'll let you come in wherever you want to. Um, okay. With the current, let's start with the, the current state of things in Nigeria. Uh, we just rounded up the NSAS protests, you know. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of hassles and scandals going up left and right. But we know what we know. Uh, we saw what we saw. So I want you to just give us a highlight on your take on exactly you know, what happened in Nigeria with the NSAS and what you think would happen after that NSAS moving forward. Thank you. Once again, uh, I'd like to say a very warm good evening from Nigeria to everyone listening on this uh, live broadcast. Yes. Um, as a Nigerian, I will speak as a Nigerian and not as uh, a rep member because before I came into the National Assembly, I was obviously in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, we have witnessed the, you know, the style, and you know, we've all seen what has been going on in this country over time. Yes. So, if I tell you that I was surprised to the NSAS movement, I would be lying. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I would actually say that it has been in the making for a long time. Yes, uh, I think it was a very organized. I personally am very impressed with the with the movement. Uh, yes. I, I with ideology, I decry, detest, and abhor the violence. Uh, it was actually very bad in my federal constituency in Bito. Mm. We had um, uh, we had uh, police killings, army killings. There were reprisal attacks on 
poor innocent citizens. And at the end of the day, I, I don't think we're better off for it. Uh, well, the initial demand has been uh, acceded to the president. Yes. And um, of course, we know that it, it, it you know, dovetailed into violence, looting of palliatives and all of that. Of I do not know exactly how it will pan out from now, but I can tell you that I have a sneaky suspicion that this, we have not heard the end from the end of uh, movement. I, I think um, this is a good time to engage and certainly as a government uh, in the National Assembly, we have been engaging. It's going to be a, a matter of constant engagement. There are genuine calls, uh, real uh, concerns. Uh, there are human rights issues. There are you know, police brutality issues. And uh, of course, we have governance issues. Uh, so we don't know how this is going to morph, uh, what's going to morph into. But um, I expect that perhaps this will lead into a series of roundtable conversations that ultimately will bring some desired changes on ground. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. And you spoke very well as a Nigerian, um, because that's what most of us have to be seeing each other as. Um, you know, there's been, uh, especially coming from the east of Nigeria, there's been a lot of... Um, speculations about you know the the two popular parties apc and pdp which i believe you are you know under the uh the the, the wing of a pdp right that's correct okay and um and uh you know one right now obviously looking at 2023 and the elections that will be coming up soon would obviously you know we have a little bit of skepticism you know in terms of what is going to happen in 2023? What is currently happening in these parties, this PDP and APC? I know sometimes we want to be very careful, but I, for some reason, I trust that you're going to be very open with what what is what is going to happen in 2023. What 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 are, what should we be expecting in Charles, terms of leadership? Yes, Charles, I'll even take it as a notch further. Yes, um, please. So. So let's look at the number of the youths, and I'm going to use data to answer your question. Please. So Please. if we have 40, 50, or 70 million youths all carrying a PVC, yes. it then doesn't matter which political party. We're no longer going to talk about parties, we talk about individuals. Right. If you identify someone whose ideology is aligned perfectly with the developmental growth that the youths are demanding for, the yes. governance style and everything that you stand for. Yes. You will throw that number in one solid block vote behind that person. That person becomes governor or that person becomes president or that person becomes whatever it is that he's running for. Yes. So I think I'll take this question back, take it away from PDP or APC or the parties and take it back to the people. I think the problem in Nigeria is only for 9% leadership. 51% is followership. Hmm. You, okay, now I'm re representing the people. How many times has anybody asked any question? Meanwhile, my job is to come to the center stage and ask questions. Sometimes as a representative, I left design what you think your people want. Engagement, we cannot get away from town hall meetings, engagement, stakeholder dialogue, and all of that. Let us shift from political party after all. If you look at the top 10 names in, P in APC today, just five years ago, they were in PDP. Mm. So if, if I'm drinking uh, Coke and I pour it out into a bottle of Fanta and I take that bottle of Fanta and drink, what am I really drinking? Coke. Is it Fanta or am I still drinking Coke? <laughs> we have to shift. We mm. cannot continue. These are young people. This Nigeria belongs to them. In 30 years, me and you would, how old would you add 30 to your age? Yes. Yeah. Most of these young men missed the civil war. Yes. Some of them never experienced the military rule. When you are talking about this, your baggage, they are disconnected completely. They don't understand. They don't relate to it. These are generation Y children and Nigerians. These are people that relate to social media. These are people that use cryptocurrency. These are people that you know yes. they are taught. They are smart. They compete anywhere. Just today, mm. we broke that a Nigerian has won one of the house of rep seats in the u.s is yes. in nigeria if that man had a platform in nigeria he would probably have been in the in the, in the congress in nigeria 
Very true. But because of the way we, we run our party system, the way we select our leaders, obviously a lot of people don't get the chance and the opportunity and the platform. So I don't want us to be fixated on platforms. Rather, I want us to come together and move on ideology. Yes. Let us say, look, this is the Nigeria we want to build, and let us start the building blocks, one step at a time. There's a lot to do. There's yes. a lot of gaps. There's a lot of challenges. Every sector has one issue. But I think if we get the right people, if we get the right people in place, take a round peg and situate that round peg in a round hole, we have started our journey. That's my answer. I agree. I agree with you. Thank you. That, that's a very realistic, smart answer. Um, if you look at it, you know, coupled with the fact that, you know, a lot of the, the, the young adults, you know, in Nigeria, the youth, so to say, um, have lost their dreams, aspiring to be uh, politicians or individuals that can help move, you know, the country forward. And I say this to say that the, the elections that we should be looking forward to, for some reason, has become almost like the bane of our existence, that people don't even believe in the elections anymore. So when, when, when you state the fact that at least between 50 to 70 million of Nigerians who have that PVC, you know, can vote, one will begin to ask, have we not been voting in the past? And if we have not, or if we have, what happened to the votes? Because obviously, a lot of times we hear this rigging of a problem, you know? And I, I personally feel like if the rigging is taking place, it is obviously because we're not doing something correctly. Let's use America, for instance, which some people think it's easy to rig elections in America. It is absolutely almost impossible to rig elections because of the structure that has been put in place. So my question is, what is the Nigerian government doing to put a structure that we can trust, a structure that if we say we have voted, we can count on that structure and not assume that one party or the other will read the election? You, you know, um, this is a very smart question. So yes. thank you for this. I, I want to say to you that I don't know how many elections you have been part of in Nigeria. Yes. But I was part of, I, I put myself up for election in 2015. I won, thank God. I, uh, I, I, I put myself forward again in 2019 and I ran and I won. So I can talk to you specifically about the experiences that I have had. And this is my take. I yes. think every round of election that we have in Nigeria, we improve. We are not running a perfect system because Nigeria as a country is not running a data-driven society. Correct. We don't know how many num uh, how many Nigerians we have. We don't know. Uh, we don't use technology like they use in. A and now this is deliberate. This is deliberate because if you come to the banking sector, mm. we are running perfect technology systems where I will have a card <laughs> of uh, maybe Zenith Bank and I will go to a UBA and withdraw the cash and they will debit my so when it comes to banking for instance yes. we run a technology driven and a data driven uh ecosystem so when it comes to action we still do our collation by paper <laughs> announcement by paper and if you see this announcement sometimes you see a returning officer unable to read his own writing he will hmm. be shaking and he will be because he knows he has done something fish and his heart has failed him we really need to embrace technology. There is nothing, there's no other way. This electronic voting is something that, whether we like it or not, it yes. must come to play. Yes. We are using, before, we're using data that in our telecom sector, we had 120 million subscribers. The day we decided to interrogate that data and said, look, we're going to go for unique numbers. Every Nigerian has two or three numbers. Now, every number that you have become one. The entire number came down to about 70 million subscribers. We saw the same thing in the banking sector when we introduced BVN. Hmm. So these are the real figures. We don't know anything. So we need to amend our electoral process and electoral procedures by way of an electoral act amendment. I am going to be a champion of that. I'm going to be calling for it, and I'm going to follow that amendment through every cycle of the bill to be hmm. sure that if the president can give us 
before he leaves office, an electoral act amended that is signed that says we recognize electronic media, we will recognize your voter's card, we will have a back end of a server which we can use in, a, in, 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 in perhaps electoral tribunal cases mm. to, so that your votes will count. Really, ultimately, mm. what we want to say is that Nigerians have the opportunity to select who leads them. That's all. So that if they get it wrong, they will wait for you in the next cycle, or even while you are still there, they can initiate the process of either impeachment, a yes. record, whatever mm. it is that our constitution provides. So it's not perfect yet, but I know that is increasingly getting better and better because the consciousness of Nigerians are also improving. Yes. The last election we had in Edo, if, if one of the reasons why the elections were adjusted to be so transparent is because what transpired in the boots counted. Mm. Once you saw your victory at the boots and they transmitted and upload it, that was it. it was nothing was cast in stone. So mm. you can see that we are making progress. We are progress. not there yet. But I think if we put the right electoral act amendments on ground, and I can tell you that this current National Assembly is working on that as we speak, our prayer is that we can conclude that work in time for the benefit of Nigerians and that Mr. President will sign off on that bill. And I can assure you, we might not get a 100%, but if we are currently maybe at 60 and we can push it to 80, yes. I think we progress. I think so too. I think so too. Okay, Honorable, um, I'm going to touch up on you know, a few questions. Obviously, I did announce that I will be live with you. And, yes. Um, and one of the reasons, um, uh, one of the things with my life is that eventually, you know, this video gets posted and it remains there and people can always go back to it, right? And a lot of people get to trust this life because they know me to ask questions that so many other people might not ask. So there are three questions here that I want us to address. One is, as an honorable in your own constituency, I'm going to be asking you a few things that you have achieved in that constituency and there's a reason why uh, the second one is the plans for not just nigerians okay or i should say not just emolites but also nigerians who live in the diaspora and how they can be involved with the nigerian government in terms of how they can move the country forward. Because right now, you know, for those in the diaspora, it's like we're not among. The only thing that counts is our money when we send money through Western Union and that's it. And if you look at the if you look at the uh, immigration and uh, system that gives some type of count, you will see that it's almost millions of Nigerians that are not in Nigeria, that are all over the world. So that's the second question. And then the third question will be your political ambitions. Because I know that is not going to end here. I know, and I'm assuming that you should have some plans to move forward because speaking with you for these few minutes, you know, it's different. It's different. I'll tell you that there's, there's a level of exposure. So those are the three questions that I would like for you to tackle. Okay. Um, well, for the achievements in my constituency, I'd like to remind us all, and I'm, I thank God in the US that the job of a congressman is actually pretty well defined. Yes. So I make laws, I amend laws, I repeal laws, Correct. and of course I oversight. That is it. Okay. But because I am in the center, whatever benefits I can attract from the center to my constituency is also one of the things that they judge me by. We have in the Bitoli Cable Federal Constituency, one of the worst, or should I say the least federal present hmm. in Nigeria. Absolutely nothing. And so since I got in, I have focused on trying to drag one of the institutions, any federal institution, into my federal constituency because this is one way that can have a knock-on effect in the local economy. Correct. Uh, so I've I've got I've really gone far to try and bring in the open right. university, the mm -hmm. open university, a campus, an outreach school in my constituency, of course. The problem with that is that they are insisting on some basic infrastructure to come in, which we haven't uh, concluded, but we have started. There's a two kilometer road. We have concluded one kilometer, and hopefully, with this 2021 budget cycle, we are going to complete it. And then, obviously, in the minute we link that uh, infrastructure, we already have the facility, but we don't have access into the facility. That's one. Secondly, I have also given uh, priority 
to human capital development and especially jobs, federal jobs. It's not been easy. It's not been easy, but luckily for me, in my first tenure between 2015 to 2018, I served in some critical committees like the Navy and the Nigerian Air Force committees. And I think I did pretty well because I was able to attract, push a few of our people into the Nigerian Navy and the Nigerian Air Force. Of course, we also made inroads into some ministry, federal ministries and all of that. But again, my brother, how many people can you put in the civil service? That's true. Nigeria is producing an average of 4 million graduates every year. Even with this COVID lockdown, at the end of 2020, we are going to be pushing a new 4 million graduates into the job market. So we have to think outside of the box. It's no longer a white collar. <laughs> it's about the SME industry. We have to really grow small scale businesses. For me, anything that you're engaged in and at the end of the month, you can have money in your pocket to take care of your needs. You are good to go. Yes. So I am focusing on capacity building, putting a lot of empowerment the way of our people so that they can stand on their own. Sometimes, you know, we do these things, sing, uh, you know, in an uh, individual basis and sometimes we do them in groups. But those things are long lead items. Sometimes you can look over the last six months and say, look, I've not been able to empower so many people. But the, in terms of the legislative work, yes. I think by the grace of God that I have been able to distinguish and establish myself in the House of Representatives. I want you to know that in the Ninth Assembly, we are running with a legislative agenda, which has nine key sectors. Mm -hmm. And when COVID broke, when the pandemic came, we came back and reviewed our legislative agenda to align Nigeria with the global outlook. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God today, this House has taxed me with the responsibility of chairing that committee to implement the legislative agenda, and I'm mm -hmm. starting sectoral reforms and we're going to start with security because we believe that the Nigerian police, which is what started all of this uh, NSAS movement, need institutional reforms. We have actually completed the first amendment bill, but uh, we're having issues at the Supreme Court because there's a constitutional challenge between the Police Service Commission and their rights for employment. But the second bill is more of a structural bill where we are going to increase minimum standards and we're going to put an ombudsman status on the Nigerian police. And of course, we're going to do this with uh, sectoral reforms on the health sector, uh, on, on the education sector, on economy, agriculture, environment, climate change, even governance and all of that. So right. you will find that in terms of the legislative sagacity, I try to focus on reforms because I know that our systems need to be tweaked and need to be improved and need to be aligned. In terms of on ground in my constituency, I'm focusing on making sure that one, we have enough federal presence in my constituency, and of course, we can empower as many people to be self-sufficient. Uh, on the second question on uh, my plan, the plans we have for Nigerians uh, to move the country forward and get diasporans involved. Yes. You know, I've actually recognized that as an Igbo man, that I have two levels of diaspora. I have the diasporans outside the Niger uh, Nigeria, and I have diasporans that are outside the Southeast. Yes. I've actually identified that we have more, in the Southeast, we have more diasporans outside. So if you go to live, there's no state you go to in Nigeria today where after you count the local population, the next largest population you have are the Igbos. Not just in numbers, but by investment, by integration, by marriage, by whatever you want to call it. That's how we are. Yes. We travel, we establish, and we build wherever we are. We add value. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way, as in the Igbo, first of all, to trap that. Uh, this, when I was growing up, all the developments that came to my community were by self-help. Mm. Everything. The school in my community was built by my community. The first pipe bomb water in my community was built by launchings from the community sons and daughters. Yes. The uh, electricity, everything. Now, all of a sudden, if I build a road and there is a pothole, nobody touches it. They want government to come and touch it. If the gutter fills up, the youths who are not doing anything will not want to go and desail the gutter. And so we have actually derailed over time. But for the diaspora, people like myself are looking for those diasporans that are committed 
not just by staying outside the country and inciting people in the country for uh, you know their peculiar interest no yes. people that want to not just send hundred dollars a month but are interested when it comes to time to decide these are the people that will want to go into offices. They will get involved. They will educate their people. They will prevent vote buying. They will prevent rigging. They will ensure that things and systems are being transformed. Mm. I am looking for those people. And I think even if those opportunities don't ex exist by way of an institution, mm. we in the National Assembly have a committee on diaspora. Mm -hmm. We have a committee on foreign affairs. And yes. we have intervention agencies in Nigeria that seek to aggregate all these people on one page so that we can engage with them. If you know a group that wants to engage with me, please, after this uh, live meeting, put me in touch and let me be. I was going to say so. Okay, okay. great. Final question, my ambition for the future, I don't know. I, I believe the legislature is a good place to remain. Yeah. I think that's something where you repeat and you come back and you become an institution, I think the institution gains and you gain and your constituency gains. If I don't see the benefit of coming here once and not coming back again because all the training and experience gathered will be wasted. Yes. I think it depends when you come back to the point where your community starts to benefit significantly mm -hmm. because the legislature is an area of ranking. We believe in ranking. So by the time you come and come and come just like you have in the US. Yes. You have Congress people that have been there for 20 years, 30 years. There are people that stay in the Senate until they retire from politics. Mm -hmm. I think when I take my decision, I have not made up my mind yet. Yes. I still have the mandate of the people and I'm trying to execute my campaign promises. But when the time comes and I do take a decision to continue in politics, mm -hmm. I will be seeking to remain within the legislature. Got you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. I was going to ask, is there any other thing that you would like to add? Um, because with regards to the people that are willing to serve, we have a lot of them here with yes. no direction. That is the problem. No direction. They don't know the right person to go to. They don't know who to meet. We have some on ground, like my friend, uh, Ms. Amarilis, that have all, you know, somehow proved herself for the last four and a half years by moving back to Nigeria. You see, that's a big move. So it the is. problem with a lot of the people in the diaspora is, you know, living a life here and then moving back, you know, it's like something has to be on ground and how they need some type of direction. And I know them and I'll be bringing them to you. Okay. Good. Just so you know, good. And a good number of them actually will be in Imo State. In December, so good. Maybe, I'll be, I'll be there. Okay, great. Maybe we can discuss on how there can be some type of meeting so you can give directions because right now they don't know. Fantastic. Um, I, I just want to encourage us yes. to believe in this country. Yes, I know there are different sentiments and all of that, but I believe that we're actually better off together. Yes. I think there's a lot of potential. I think whatever it is that seeks to divide us can actually be converted into a strength. Yes. I think we have a lot to give. I don't believe that things are that bad that we cannot fix it. All we need is just to dedicate and say, look, let us try. Just need yes. to try. If everybody is trying at the same pace, trust me, we are going to start to see the changes that we, 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 we desire. We have a lot of gaps and less, extremely so. That like God has put enough in this country to make us number one country in the world. Yes. But somehow, people, the people, the people, that's where we need to work on. And these are soft issues. If you build a hospital, that's the hardware. Until you put in the software, which is the soft issues, doctors, systems, drugs, it will not work. It, it is time for us to do the things that our people want. Let us do the things that connect and resonate with them because we are representing. Look, these guys are my employers. That's the relationship I have with them. Without them, I have no job. Once we can understand that we are accountable to these guys that send us to represent them or to occupy offices, I think we'll begin to change. So if we are talking about restructuring, I want us to restructure our mind first, our mindset. Let us get it right. Some of the things that we do don't make sense. 
Mm. It is absurd. And we need to start making sense, really, in this country. I think that I would like to, I mean, if, if I have further opportunities to take on specific sectors with you, I would love that very much so that we can drill down on some of the issues that people want to ask me. And if anybody is out there that wants to reach me, you can reach me on my Twitter handle, uh, RT. You can ask me questions, you can engage on Facebook, and uh, hopefully uh, we can begin to connect. I mean, if they're looking for mentors, I'm right here, I am. Use me. Yes, I sure, I sure will bring them. It's going to shock you. <laughs> this is Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, right, Honorable Henry Odochiko Wanwuba. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, you know, I, I, I promise not to take much of their time because it's a very busy individuals. Uh, he has a line of workers that are in the back room. <laughs> I can't bring them on, obviously, because it was just for me and him, but these are dedicated individuals. Uh, Barista Johnny is there, uh, Ikechuku is there, Ikechuku is there, Mr. Ikechuku is there, and, and uh, there was one other person. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. Um, you know, this is what we, he has said. He said it right here. For those of you who are in some way or the other interested in, in joining, in moving the country forward, whether based in China, Germany, America, wherever you are, you know, it's a good time. You can contact me. If I have a good number of people that would not mind making their faces and, and, and selves present, you know, this Christmas or the Christmas uh, season in Imo State, it will be a good opportunity because I know it's thousands of people that are coming back. So it'll be a good opportunity, let's say about 50 to 100 people, then I can go ahead and strike a deal with, you know, uh, Honorable here so that we can all meet up and have some type of uh, um, uh, town hall meeting. Honorable, thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll be talking very soon again because this, this is not the first and last. This is just- My pleasure. Beginning. Thank you so much. Sir. You have a great day, sir. And you Thank too. You. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's how we're doing right here. It's a many MC chairs. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has made today. I want to thank Honorable and his team for giving us this good 30 minutes of their time. It's not easy leaving what it is that needs to be done. Yes, you're right. Unemployment is a problem. Good roads, security, all that stuff. But this is a time, you know, we've gotten to the point where we cannot complain further. We need to start making change. Just like Honorable said, and I have been saying for the longest, it's all right here in the, in the head. So we're not going to just hand responsibilities over to people, okay? We won't just hand responsibilities over to them. We're going to work with them. We'll be there to hold them accountable, hold them responsible. And we can only do that by you and I getting involved. Thank you so much, guys, and have yourselves a wonderful day. We can go back and uh, continue to look at the American politics now and see who is going to emerge as the next president of the U.S. Uh, please stay safe. No issues, no problem, no wahala. And I'll see you guys shortly. One love.